Hey everyone, welcome back to Topmosphere. So today we'll be using Fibonacci retracements to predict the top and bottom for Bitcoin so that you can make your investments wiser. Alright, let's take a look at the chart. So for those that do not know, a uh, feed retracement is a tool in uh, TradingView. It's one of the most commonly used tools to determine where prices are going to move when they retrace, which means they correct, they hit a top, which could be a temporary top, could be a market top, and it retraces, and where it will retrace to using the feed retracement tool. So you can find it in TradingView under this um, toolbar. And then the way to use feed retracement is to use from, is to take from the bottom, and bring it to the top. So for the first cycle that we have in Bitcoin, so this is the Bitcoin chart all the way back to the beginning. Uh, we'll take from the top to the bottom. We'll, we'll go with the retracement first and then to find the bottom and then we'll go to the extension part to find the top. So for the bottom, um, we're gonna use the bottom here. I, I don't know if this is a bug. It seems to maybe go to like one cent, which seems to just be some kind of a bug. So I'm not so confident of using this particular candle so I might use this one instead and we'll go back to we'll take from the bottom all the way to the top over here and we'll notice that um, it actually go to the 0 0.28 too so now if you're doing this on your own trading view you might not get the same um, ranges levels unless you go to the settings and you click on feed levels based on log scale so because Bitcoin moves so exponentially uh, it's kind of accurate to use the feed retracement on a log scale when we are looking at very uh, long time frames because the movements in Bitcoin across long time frames are usually exponential in nature so we want to use exponential um, feed retracements or the log scale to see where it could be traced towards too. So let's take a note that it basically went to the 0 0.32 level more or less so we just put uh, went to retrace we trace to the 0 0.32 level. Okay, we will use this as a mental note. Okay, so for the next cycle, we will take from the bottom here, and then we go all the way to the top, and then we see where it retraced towards. Um, so the bottom of this, we trace all the way to the, between 0 0.236 and 0 0.382. So let's take a mental note. We trace between 0 0.236 and 0. 382. So it did drop a little bit below the 0.236. So let's take a look at how much it dropped. Around 40% give or take. So we trace, so let's add that number in as well. Uh, we trace 40% below the 0.236. Okay, so in 2013, it some people might call this a double pick cycle, and some people might call it two cycles, um, two different cycles. So uh, I personally think it, it's a double pick cycle. So it's one cycle, but it's just double pick because the whole the whole movement, the whole cycle lasted one year, right? From the very start to the very top, it's basically one year. So it's, it kind of feels like one cycle, but if we want to just look at it from um, two cycles, what we could do is we take the take to this first peak and we notice that it basically also didn't drop to the 0 0.382 and it corrected around also around 40% um, below the 2, 0 0.236 so that's, that's interesting to take note okay so for our next cycle which was our previous cycle we take from the bottom we go all the way to the 20k top right and then well, let's see where it retraced towards we drag this forward and then it actually retraced all the way to the 0 0.382 almost on the dot. So let's just put a note, retrace to the 0 0.382. Okay, so our next cycle, which is the one that we are at right now, we also use from the bottom here all the way to the top. Uh, oh, some people might say that this is a cycle, uh, but I don't think it's a cycle because it didn't really create a new top, so it might just be some kind of consolidation or noise. Uh, usually cycles are indicated when you have a new top. So uh, this in itself, I think it was just noise and it's not really a full cycle where you create a new top or new bottom. Right? We didn't create a new top, we didn't create a new bottom, so it's kind of just um, noise. So if we take from the bottom of the cycle from the previous one, all the way to the top 
where we're at now. Assuming this is the real top, then we would drop to... Uh, we have now dropped to the 0 0.236. So in previous markets, in the previous bull runs, uh, we noticed that it can drop to the 0 0.236 and go below the 0 0.236. Uh, but usually it does not drop... Uh, it does not drop below the 0 0.382. Right, so if we take this chart over here, and then we take the 0 0.236, we drop the we drop 40% down. That is actually our next Fibonacci extension level, a retracement level. So uh, that that kind of data is kind of not really useful in this market because if we drop 40% down, we have already dropped 40%, we have already dropped below the 0 0.382, which we have already shown in previous market that has never happened before. So uh, potentially, we can put a mark over here. This this could be the absolute bottom, which is a very uh, strong bottom as it coincides uh, almost exactly to the peak of the previous cycle. So uh, if we were to drop below this level, below the 0 0.236, then we might really drop all the way down to this level. But we have not yet dropped below this level yet, so uh, we don't know. We did drop below, but this is not a close, and it's usually good to have a confirmation, which means that you have another week where it does not uh, stay above this line. So even if we close this week below this level, right, if actually we uh, go up the next week above this level, then it might very well be a fake out. It's a bit hard to tell on just one candle close. Sometimes it fakes out. So if we look at uh, if we look at it from this level, then our bottom is potentially 20.4k. Uh, if not, we might have our temporary bottom here. Uh, this is a bit dubious because usually we show that we do not just stop at the 0 0.236 according to histori historical results. But we definitely will not drop below 0 0.382. So if you are doing leverage, which I really strongly don't recommend, just make sure that you have a little bit of margin below 0 0.382 uh, but the best is don't leverage and just continue to dollar cost averaging uh, because that's historically the safest way to, to earn your, build your wealth over time. Okay, so that's on the downside. Let's, let's look at the upside, right, which is a lot more exciting. Okay, so I'm going to delete all the feed retracements and let's take a look at the upside. Alright, so the upside is actually using the same tool. Um, sometimes you can use the FIP, trend based FIP extension, but uh, we are not going to use that. We're just, we're just going to use the same tool, but we're going to do it the opposite direction, which kind of gives us the, the extension in a way as well. So we'll use this and go from the top to the bottom. And we will extend it out to both tops and see what we get. So it went all the way up to the 1.618 to 1.786. So let's take note of that. Extend it to the 1.618 to 1.786 for the next cycle. Or you can say of the, of the current cycle. Um, so some people might, might say that this is not one full cycle on its own because this is just one within one year so it might be an entire cycle so if we do put it all the way to the absolute top of this entire cycle then it goes all the way to the 2.272 extended to the 2.272 but again some people might argue that this is two different cycles so if we do one cycle from here to, to this then we also need to do from this cycle down to the absolute bottom. Um, I think it's safer to use this wick over here because this cap this candle doesn't seem to be like a proper candle. Uh, so uh, the volatility is just a bit too insane to establish this as a proper bottom. So I'd rather use this candle wick to be the bottom instead. So we use this. Let me just change color here one sec. And let's see where we go towards. We go to the extended to the two range. So we can take this extended to the to two from the previous, let's just call it a mini mini cycle in that case. And this is from the previous full cycle. Okay, so these are some numbers to take note of. And then let's use the 
next cycle, so we take the feet retracement and then we bring it from the top all the way down to the bottom and then we extend it all the way to the peak of the cycle and let's see what we have. So we again ended up around the 2.272. So 2.272, um, you notice that at each of the intervals, each of the levels, it actually did correct, especially the key level at 1.618, it did correct rather significantly if I might add. So if you just think from the very, um, from the very same level as 1.618, you drag it all the way down. It's a pretty sizable correction of 32%. So generally, these levels are decent take profit levels. Like if you don't want to take your entire profit, you still want to keep your cards on the table, it's okay to take some profits off the table when it hits this level because statistically, not just in crypto, but in the traditional markets, these are very uh, commonly used profit-taking levels as well. So a lot of algo bots, they might take profit on this level uh, automatically. So it's not too not too bad of an idea to take profit over here. I mean, at the end of the day, you take profit over here and if you trace all the way back down, you could st technically still enter. So it's not too bad. But we did actually go all the way back to 2.272, which is also the same as the previous cycle. So we, add, we, we extended the 2.272 from the previous cycle. So let's just add that in. Okay, so for our current cycle that we're in, my Bitcoin don't have a lot of cycles, so that's why this video is not that long. We will just take this, uh, take from the top to the bottom, and then let's see what we have. So, what do we have here? We have 1.618, which is the exact top of our, I mean, it's not the top top, it's just a potential top of our current cycle. So some might say that this cycle we're having is also a double peak cycle, like in 2013. So in 2013, we also topped out at the 1.618. And right now, we are also topping out at the 1.618. I mean, uh, this might not be the absolute top, but if, it's, if it dropped 50%, it might as well be a mini top. So uh, we're just going to call it what it is. It's, it's potentially a mini top. And we stopped around the 1.272 level, which is also a FIP, uh, level that people like to retrace towards. So that, that's interesting, but we also did note that it potentially could drop to the 20k level. So there is still some room to drop over here. So this level and this level is basically a FIP level. That's why they are maintaining their, their support. And if we if we go to the 2.272 level, uh, where is that? That's actually at 205k. So that might sound insane, but it's actually not uh, entirely impossible because it does take time. Right. Assuming this trend line continues, because this trend line has not been broken, right? Uh, this trend line is basically the trend line that we took from um, the March crash, and then we just try to connect as many lines as, as possible. So we connected this week with this week, and then we connected over here, and then we basically just extended all the way. So uh, it's pure coincidence that it, it actually kept the first time it bounced it. it the first time it crashed, it bounced off this level. Second time it crashed, it also bounced off this level. Uh, third time it crashed, it bounced below this level, but it's now above this level again. So uh, we will wait to see, wait and see what's going to happen. And 2.272, as of as of today, as of this current timing, it will happen around uh, 8 August, assuming the price follows this trend line. I do not think this is going to happen. I, I think this is a bit. Too silly. So this is not a support line. It's a trend line. It's not meant to be a support line. So it can break below. Uh, what's more likely to happen is something like this. This that that's far more likely to happen. Um, it's not it's not drawn to perfection. So so don't don't follow this exactly. But it could very well do something like this, and then and then um, it could crash all the way back to the previous top. For for example. So uh, that's that's what happened if we assume that this is the this is the the bottom. Uh, but let's take a look at it from this level and then see what we have. So we take from the top to the bottom, right? And then we take one point six one eight again to be to be safe. So assuming this is the bottom, and then we go to one point six one eight, then we have it around hundred and six k. So that that's a pretty realistic top, uh, and it will happen around March. So 
2022 seems to be a very, relatively bullish year for, for crypto, assuming that this trend remains the same and assuming that uh, some macro news like Bitcoin ETF finally gets approved and we have a lot more developments and project launch fin- and we have a lot more projects finishing their development. Uh, potentially if 2.0 could launch, uh, Cardano could launch as well and all of these project launches might create a new wave of uh, investments coming in. Okay, so if we use this uh, top to this bottom and this is where we pick out at, uh, let's double check that with the previous cycle as well. So the previous double pick cycle. So we take from the top here and then we bring it, we bring it down here. We also extend it to two. So if we are, if we want to buy, use by the same, so if we want to use back the same number, so if we want to use back the same number, then we should also look at going back to the 2.0 level, which in this case would be at 144k. So this could also be a potential top. Yeah, something to take note of. So the potential top is anywhere from 106k all the way to um, all the way to. 2.272 of this level which is 205k so from here all the way to here a deviation of about 100% uh, so we all know crypto is pretty volatile so that's not within the realm of impossibility so that's not totally impossible okay but let's say what happens if Bitcoin actually drops below um, this bottom because this might not be the real bottom right the real bottom we believe is 20.4k um, if it does drop all the way here, in fact, it actually pushes our price higher. So it actually goes all the way to our 1.618 is now at 130k, and our 2.0 is also exactly on the dot at 205k. So it is possible that Bitcoin actually goes all the way to 200k uh, by next year, as long as we continue to follow this trend line. We can definitely break below, but we could simply follow it as well. So something to take note. And if we do go to that level, then what's our risk reward? So let's take a look at our risk reward. So we use the 2 over here, the long position 2. And then we take the price of the... We, we click on the current price. And then we bring it all the way down to our bottom that we believe is the bottom, which is twenty around 20k. And then we bring it to our target. So our first target is... Uh, let's be conservative. And let's say it goes all the way to the 1.618 previously. Or we, we used the number 2 previously. So yeah, it goes all the way to 2. So your risk reward level is actually 8.42, which is really high. Uh, but if we want to be really conservative and just assume that it goes to 100k, then our, your risk reward at this price is 5, 5.57, which is still really, really high. Uh, but assuming it goes all the way back down to the 20k range, which is what we believe, we believe is the bottom, you'll notice that the more it drops, the higher the potential for it to go up. So it's, it's quite interesting. So uh, when it drops a lot, it's not always a bad thing because it means that the bounce up could also be very high. So if it goes all the way down here, right? then assuming we, we're not likely to catch the very bottom. So let's just give it maybe an additional 10-15%. Uh, let's put it at 23k is where you enter. Your risk reward is 32 if we go to 100k. And it goes all the way to a, a disgusting 71.71 risk reward if we go to the 200k range, 200k price range. So in, in either case, as long as you continue to DCA in at reasonable levels, which I believe now is a reasonable level, um, all the way from here down to here is, are, are all relatively reasonable levels, uh, you should continue to do well. So you just have to be patient, don't over leverage, and make sure that you DCA in um, disciplinedly. DCA, make sure you, that you DCA with discipline, and you should be able to capture the wealth uh, of this, capture the gains of this bull run, uh, which I believe will end in 2022. I, I do not think that this bull run will last towards 2023 because the interest rates are going to increase in uh, end of 2022 or early 2023. So it's very likely that Bitcoin. So it is very likely that Bitcoin ends its bull run in 2022. It could be in the middle. 
So if we look at the middle of 2022, so if we look at the middle of 2022, which is in June, then our price would be around um, 165k, which is not impossible. Uh, but generally, I think being conservative and taking profit at 100k range is quite quite a good idea. Uh, you do not have to take your full profit. It's really uh, dependent on your your risk level. Uh, but I do think it's worth taking some profit at at 106k. You can also definitely be taking profit along the way up. It's not like you have to wait to this level and then take your profit. We might never actually hit this level. So something to take note of. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe and share this video with your friends. And I'll see you guys again in the next video.